Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today I'm gonna show you a really powerful shortcut to help you save time in assembly modes when you're working with patterns. Ow! So here we can see we're working on an assembly of the bass guitar, and it looks like this bass guitar only has one control knobby, and that is not going to be enough for me to, to really dial in the tone that I want. So let's open up the pick guard here, and let's create some additional holes in the pick guard. And to create these holes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a curve here, a sketch of an arc, and then I'm gonna use that arc to create a pattern at the feature level. This is called a curve-driven pattern. So I'm gonna pick that arc, and I'm gonna say this hole here is gonna be what gets patterned, and that's gonna get patterned with equal spacing along that curve. So I think three knobbies is probably enough for me to get some pretty good tone out of this bass guitar. So let's now return to the assembly. And what we can see in the assembly is that this knobby belongs to a sub-assembly, the base knobby sub-assembly. Well, a really powerful bit of functionality in SolidWorks assembly mode is what's known as the pattern-driven component pattern. Because what this lets you do essentially is take a part or a sub-assembly and pattern it right on top of an existing feature pattern from the part level. And so here what we can do is we can say pattern driven component pattern, the base knobby assembly is going to be what gets patterned. And then the driving feature is going to be this cut extrude, which is actually that curve driven pattern. So curve pattern two in the base body in the pick guard is really what I'm patterning about here. And what's so powerful is not only that it patterned those components exactly into place, it's almost like I saved myself having to make those mates because the pattern is gonna be exactly in place on those holes, but also the fact that I can go back to the pick guard later and I can say, you know what? Three knobbies is not enough. I need four knobbies to really get the tone that I want from this bass guitar. And as soon as I return to that top level assembly, we can see that a fourth knobby has automatically been populated in that fourth hole. So this is a really great way to leverage the patterns that you create at the part level to use and reuse at the assembly level. Now, there's a lot of different types of patterns we can create in SolidWorks. We can create the curve-driven pattern like I did here. We can create a linear pattern or a circular pattern. And these things will all work when it comes to using this uh, pattern-driven component pattern. But another type of pattern that'll work is what's known as the hole wizard. Now, I know you might not normally think of a hole wizard as a pattern, but if you think about it, what the hole wizard consists of is two sketches. One of those sketches is a cut revolve. So here we can see the cut revolve for that counter bore. But the second sketch is a point sketch. And so what we're really dealing with when we talk about the whole wizard in SolidWorks is a point-driven sketch pattern of a feature. Any place that I drop one of these points, an additional copy of that cut revolve will be populated. So it's a point-driven sketch pattern. Well, because it's a pattern, that makes this a candidate for the pattern-driven component pattern at the assembly level. And so here we can see in the sub-assembly of the base body, we've got one screw holding down this pick guard. And what I can do with that one screw is I can once again launch the pattern-driven component pattern. And then I can pick the whole wizard feature for the pattern to pattern about. And when I hit the green check mark, we'll see that those screws are all populated into all those holes. Oh, wait a second. We got these screws all out here. That's not what I wanted. Well, what's happened here is that the seed location for my hole wizard hole is not the same as the location where my first screw is. If you recall, the seed location is actually over here on this horn. And so that's not the same as the location where I mated that first screw into place. But I have good news for you here. If we edit that pattern driven component pattern, there's this button here that says select seed position. And then all I need to do is click on this purple dot here. And now that location becomes the seed component location for the pattern driven pattern. And when we hit the green check mark, everything looks great. And we've now got these nice screws in here and all of these holes to hold down our pick guard. And once again, I know I mentioned this before, but I think it bears repeating. If I ever decided that I needed an additional hole here with a screw in it, all I need to do is go back to the original pattern, which in this case is a hole wizard feature, create one additional point here where I want that new screw, exit that sketch, return to the assembly, and we'll see that SolidWorks has automatically populated that new location of the hole wizard hole with a new piece of hardware from that pattern driven component pattern. And that, in my opinion, is a super power move in SolidWorks. But what do you think? Did you know about this functionality? Are there any clever ways that you've come up with using this functionality to save yourself time? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next episode.